Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tucker and Crowley Report. I'm joined by Franklin Tucker, longtime editor of Belmont's online newspaper, The Belmontonian, and I'm Mike Crowley. So, Franklin, first I want to mention that our producer, Matt Simonelli, and some of the BMC crew here um, have won a first place award last night at the Northeaster Community Media Festival for their short film, Cheater, Cheater. And this is a film that you can see here soon at, at the Belmont Media Center. Um, and I would like to say congratulations. So congratulations to Matt and the rest of the crew. It shows, it just shows the creativity that the uh, staff um, has. And, um, and it's, it's, it's just great to know that the Media Center is not just a uh, forum for uh, two white guys to talk about politics. It's, uh, <laughs> you, can, you can go out and you can see some real talent uh, here uh, working at uh, uh, BMC. That's absolutely right. So um, real talent, that's not us. That's our producer, <laughs> Matt Simonelli, and the rest of the crew here at BMC. So Franklin, next, let's talk about the last night of special town meeting. That's right. Well, uh, the last night of special town meeting, we um, it was uh, seen as a, 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 a a meeting where uh, two um, major articles were coming, be, uh, two major articles were being presented. Uh, and I think a lot of people saw um, one of the articles as being most impactful. But in fact, it was the smaller article that only took 20 minutes to debate that I think will have a much longer impact in terms of the town. The first article is from the Energy Committee. It's basically to approve a, a specialized code, which means you know, to accelerating uh, to accelerate uh, electrification in residential commercial real estate, it basically forces new buildings to be either uh, all electric or to be wired to be electric. Um, and and Franklin, I just want to mention that that debate did seem to attract a bit of controversy, didn't it? There were comments from um, uh, individuals who believe that uh, it's not really going to make much change in terms of climate change. Uh, uh, um, controls um, that it will cost, um, and and they admit uh, the energy committee admits that it will cost uh, uh, um, more to build a house under these specialized codes, and there's also uh, the idea that um, that it might uh, mean that our, our limited number of uh, uh, city uh, town employees who uh, deal with uh, building homes and stuff like that, they'll have to do even more work. So the, the, that was uh, the, the three areas that uh, people questioned uh, the uh, amendment, but it passed uh, overwhelmingly. Now, I, I, I just would mention that, um, um, you know, it was mentioned at town meeting that um, housing um, is or, or buildings are the source of 42 percent of of our town's um, um, carbon footprint. Yeah. And and so, um, you know, some of the thinking about this is that, uh, you know, we absolutely have to do something different in terms of of the, the heating and energy usage of our homes um, or this this major contributor to global warming will not be addressed. And it, and it passed uh, and it, it passed muster at uh, town meeting. So I, a lot of people believe that. All right. So um, whether it makes a difference in the long run or not, let's talk about um, the, the the probably the the the, ne the the most significant article in terms of you know its potential impact on the town's finances. Um, and this was the article that would um, revise. Um, 61B. Can you explain that, Franklin? Sure. 61B is a, is a law that was passed in the 1970s. And what it does is that uh, if you are an organization that has uh, open, la open land, um, such as a golf course, uh, you can uh, uh, take 75% of that open land. You can have a tax exemption by keeping it open land, by keeping it a golf course, by keeping it a, any, a, you know, a, a polo. <laughs> field. Um, uh, that doesn't mean, uh, and, and what it was directed to, and 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 the sponsor of this uh, 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 amendment uh, to the bylaws basically said, look, we we know that there's only one um, 
area, there's only one um, entity that we're looking at, and that's the uh, Belmont Country Club uh, in uh, West uh, Belmont. And, um, you know, I think what people understand is that, um, you know, um, why should this golf course that's making a lot of money, um, uh, why should it be exempt from uh, the taxes when we are when when the town is in real desperate need of any kind of revenue source? Um, but but it's also a long term view. I mean, uh, something that uh, Elizabeth Dion, who's been sponsor, who's been supporting this for over 10 years, and that is. Let's start. Let's start making West Belmont um, an area that we can build something more like commercial buildings. Let's see if we can um, make that an area that can generate money, not just by residential um, uh, construction, which it's now uh, as of right. Uh, you could build at that site. Let's start um, moving uh, forward by changing the zoning in that area, changing building codes, you know, and 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 changing the uh, tax exemption to start yeah. to look to, to have a long term view of of changing that area of Belmont. Yeah, and and so I just mentioned Franklin that you know um, the, these are all sort of first steps, but ultimately. Uh, the the Belmont Country Club would need to uh, divest itself of some of that land um, in order for uh, that development to take place. And I, well, I think that that I think the long term view is that you know why not just you know look at the entire Bel Belmont Country Club as a potential uh, uh, construction site or, or, or a new area of town. Um, you know, it could be a very exciting area if you do it correctly. If you think, if you have some forward thinking, and you and you really work with the country club and the people who own that, to um, to uh, really uh, set forward a uh, long term view of that area, it could be very, very uh, interesting, very exciting. Okay, so the article that passed town meeting um, Monday night uh, it sets in motion a request to the legislature. To That's right. It has to go the. That's right. It has to go to the yeah. legislature. It has to pass the legislature. Now, it, it also what we've heard is that uh, other towns, knowing that Belmont has gone forward with this, they're interested in, in seeing if, if they can join it or, or have their legislators uh, uh, promote this. Because, you know, there's a lot of towns that have, you know, um, especially Newton, that has three country clubs that use that, that 75 percent exemption. They would they would like to see what would how that could go forward in their towns. All right, so we will have to see what the legislature decides, but this at least launches a process that um, uh, that may help see some changes take place in in Western Belmont. All right, so um, next up, Franklin, um, we've entered budget forum season. Um, Thursday night, there was a uh, school budget forum where three different alternatives were outlined for the budget a level services budget um, a budget with a with an override and um, and potentially what the budget looks like um, you know if there is no override or if an override fails and, and I think um, you see, I think you saw with the interest on on Wednesday night how many uh, uh, teachers and, and parents were you know, wanting to talk about budget. It was very, yeah. very interesting that to see that, 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 you know, we're not at a time where people are coming up and saying, what's the budget in, in February or March? They're now looking at it right now. And um, so the interest in this year's budget and, and, and the uh, attempted override is, is growing. Um, uh, and I think right now, you know, right before this week, we've been doing a lot of uh, the the town is doing a lot of assumptions on what the budget will look like. Now, this next budget uh, summit on the thirtieth, we will have uh, what the town will have now is the 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 one thing that they they didn't have, and that is certified free cash. It's now been uh, certified by the state at eleven point eight million dollars. Um, it will now now. We're talking about real numbers. There's no more assumptions. These are these are actual numbers that the town is going to be promoting. So this is the first look at potentially what that budget's going to look like, and and what the budget will look like, uh, like you said, with an override or without an override. And that's what the town will put out. And I'll I'll just mention Franklin that that um, you know the the eleven the eleven point eight uh, million in free cash. Um, 
you know, the, the thinking about that isn't that it, it plugs, you know, nobody is thinking that it plugs the entire gap. Um, if, if you, I, I think if there's you, some people actually do think that. <laughs> well, so, so perhaps, but I think in terms of what the town administration is thinking, uh, and I'm, I'm basing this on Wednesday night's warrant committee meeting, um, the, the thinking is to use 3 million of that for the budget and, and to anticipate um, that, you know, a similar amount would be available in following years. And then the rest, the rest gets banked um, either for future capital needs or as reserves. And I think that's something that, that is, that is now almost like uh, a gold standard for the uh, town administration. You know, they want to do that. They're going forward with that and that's their entire assumption. Okay, Franklin. Um, um, so, oh, we should mention the um, the budget the budget forum coming up um, on November thirtieth, and, and and this will be the like I said before, we're actually we're, they're, they're going to be talking about actual numbers. This is something that you know with that before we had free cash uh, certified, all assumptions. Now we're talking uh, uh, a real number. And uh, that's when people can start really debating on where, you know, where the budget should be, you know, where, where uh, added funds should go to. And this is a budget forum on November 30th that, that will be talking about um, revenue and potential, potential uh, budget for both the town as well as the school department. So that's anybody paying attention to the budget, you'll want to attend this forum. And that will be a, a hybrid um, uh, uh, I believe it's, yeah it's, it's going to be a hybrid um, and if you if you like the action uh, in person as we both do um, <laughs> it's, it's a great time it's a great place to be all right Franklin so um, uh, next up let's talk about uh, sports that's right well let's talk about the uh, last part of sports we have one sporting event left uh for uh, belmont athletes um and that is the uh traditional thanksgiving day uh game against watertown uh this has been a great year for the uh football team uh for the belmont football team we've beaten teams that we haven't beaten in decades uh had a had a great run unfortunately um a uh the uh, playoff game that Belmont uh, uh, earned its way into uh, Belmont had just so many injuries that they, they just, they just couldn't keep up with Wells Wellesley. And uh, it was a bit of a downer, but um, you know, it's uh, Belmont's uh, has uh, uh, Belmont won uh, its first Middlesex title in, in many, many uh, decades. It was just, a, it was, it's just a great year for the, for the football team. And we'll, we'll try to beat Watertown at victory field um on thanksgiving it starts at 10 um um 10 o'clock on thanksgiving so uh everybody should be there um we shouldn't let let off that we should we should uh, talk about the boys soccer team uh, okay. uh which which uh won a uh, which uh uh, had a great run in the tournament uh two two upset victories um and uh, uh under uh Nyman uh, Kendry, uh, the coach who's, who who is who um, installed a pro, uh, a really interesting pro style of of play, something that you don't see in high school, and it really worked out in the first, in two upsets. They went to Winchester in the quarterfinals. Uh, they unfortunately lost one nothing on a freak goal. Oh, just a just a just. Uh, the the Winchester player was in the right place at the right time, um, and uh, the Winchester goalie also saved two uh, two miraculous uh, saves uh, in the in the second half. So Belmont, unfortunately, uh, their run ended there. But what a great um, uh, season they had! But let's also end this with uh, talking about another state champion for Belmont, and that person is uh, a, a junior uh, diver. Her name is Robin Toromura McDonald, and she won the uh, Division um, One uh, state diving title. So, oh, congratulations amazing. for her! All right, congratulations! All right, uh, Franklin, this wraps our segment. So be sure to be sure to tune in next time, and we'll see you then. Um, you can find more of Franklin's reporting at Belmontonian.com. Thank you.